I got a new blanket. So our little friend here is just gonna join us. And I got a new laptop sticker that I really love. <laughs> I will link the website that I got these on down below, as well as some resources on how you can help the injustice that is happening in America right now. So today I thought we would talk all about Unfriended and its sequel, Unfriended Dark Web. Now I've actually talked about Unfriended before and I've done a whole review, how many years ago? Five years ago it was, when it first came out. And I rarely ever do like another review for a movie if I've already done one. But I thought since it's been five years, I recently watched both of them in one sitting in one day, I figured we would do a dedicated video to talk about Unfriended a little bit more. I honestly remembered not liking Unfriended, but then when I went back and watched my super short review on it, I really liked it, which I guess is mostly accurate since I like teen horror and specifically kind of bad teen horror, because I do generally really like Unfriended, the first one, as lame as like the concept can be, I actually think it's a little bit underrated and overlooked because of the cheesy elements in it, but let's let's just jump into it. Before I do though, this is more of a deeper analysis of these videos, so there will be spoilers throughout, but I will warn you prior to each movie spoilers that I'm gonna be talking about spoilers. But I would recommend just watching both of them or having seen them before watching this video. So we're gonna start first with Unfriended and then we'll talk about Dark Web. So Unfriended follows a group of friends on a Skype call and realizes that there's an extra person in the call that begins tormenting them and they realize it's actually a supernatural force that ends up being their friend that recently passed away. My neighbors are very loud. So of course the gimmick of Unfriended is that it is filmed entirely on a MacBook screen and that is actually how it was filmed. They created a mock Skype interface so they wouldn't experience lag if they had used actual Skype. And the entire cast besides Ken was actually filming all within the same house. They were just stationed in different rooms. That's why you see one of them in their living room, one in the laundry room, rooms, some in bedrooms, and the cast actually got to decorate all of their own rooms prior to filming. And I think there's a lot behind the scenes that make this movie a little bit underrated because at first glance you see it as a cheesy bad teen horror kind of movie and I don't really see anything wrong with it. I don't think the acting is terrible. I mean obviously the story is quite unrealistic like that but given that it's a supernatural movie, we just like know that that's what is going on. A lot of things were actually changed last minute to keep the authenticity from the actors and a lot of things were actually improvised. They weren't given a super hard script. They were asked to kind of react to other people, like the other actors as they went. And it was all shot in one continuous take. Pepe is obsessed with this blanket. As soon as I opened it, he like his eyes lit up and I just put it on the couch and he never left it. Like he's just been sleeping on this blanket since I got it. Like I said, it was all shot in one continuous take and actually the cast was kind of lied to as to what the movie would actually be about. They were told that they were the ones being bullied by this Laura character and not the other way around, which doesn't really make sense when you watch the movie because at some point they had to know that that's what was happening. So obviously a lot of people like to say how bad Unfriended is. I think I included it in my movie so bad that they're actually good video, but I actually don't think Unfriended is that bad because when you take into consideration all of the techniques that they use to make the movie feel as realistic as possible, it's actually done really technically well. Was it still a little cheesy? Sure, was it unrealistic? Definitely, but I do think that the actors were pretty good at carrying the film and my favorite part about the movie is the gore It had amazing gore and the way that it glitches It makes you frustrated as a viewer because you want to see what's happening But they did it and they used that technique smartly because it made it more disturbing the fact that we couldn't see everything that was going on So given that I want to discuss the gore a little bit more I will be talking about spoilers for unfriended. So if you've not seen it yet, I mean I think most people who clicked on this video have probably seen it, but I'm gonna talk about some of the deaths. <laughs> I think Unfriended had some of the same appeal that movies like Final Destination and Saw had going for it because we are kind of in it for the gore, I think, and obviously the story development and everything, but that is the cheesiest part of this movie, let's be real. I think we're drawn to the gore and the deaths in Unfriended specifically for the same reasons we like Saw and Final Destination. There are creative deaths and it's like, how are they gonna die? Same thing with Sorority Row. The deaths are very creative, very unrealistic, I guess, and disturbing ways to die, but that's kind of why we watch it. I think my favorite death, hands down, in Unfriended is Ken and the blender scene where first it's his hand and then it kind of cuts and then he just 
places his neck on the spinning blade. <laughs> As I mentioned, I think that the way they shot the death scenes was actually really effective because of the glitches that they used and the, you know, cutouts from like the internet. You know, when you Skype someone, it like kind of cuts out or like freezes. It did that a lot. And I think this allowed for some really good jump scares. And I'm normally not a huge fan of jump scares, but I think I've warmed up to the idea of them because as long as they're followed through and they actually add to the horror experience, I don't really have a problem with them. So overall, I really enjoy Unfriended. I thought I didn't at first, but looking back, I guess I did enjoy it. I don't know why I thought that I didn't at some point think it was bad. But I think that the bad elements of it, like the bad teen horror, kind of the cheesiness, is actually a really endearing factor and makes me enjoy it even more, but I am obviously a big fan of bad teen horror anyway. But I do think it makes for a really good rewatch, unlike Dark Web. Let's talk about Unfriended Dark Web, shall we? I think that these movies are almost polar opposites of one another and feel like they're made by different people, which they kind of are. So Dark Web is actually written and directed by Steven Susco, and although he's worked in horror for a while as a writer and producer, this is actually his directorial debut. He's worked on movies such as The Grudge, The Possession, and Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3D. So Nelson Greaves, one of the original creators of Unfriended, stayed on as a producer for Dark Web, but I still feel like these movies are just so far removed from each other. While the first movie had technically cheesy bad elements that I think added to the movie experience, I think Dark Web was way too ambitious with its plot and was just in over its head. So Dark Web follows, like the first one, a group of friends on a Skype call, but this time our main character had actually stolen a laptop that is hacked by the previous owner that can now watch his every move. He discovers some disturbing videos on the computer, Dark Web kind of stuff of course, and realizes what he he's gotten himself into. So spoilers from here on out for Dark Web if you haven't seen it yet. So Dark Web is obviously completely different from the first movie because instead of a supernatural entity kind of taking over, it is Dark Web members or like a hacker taking over. So it's meant to be much more realistic and more believable. You know, it's a hacked computer organization group that are instead playing a game with the Skype members. So I appreciate the concept and I think it's actually a really cool idea especially how unfriended films are filmed being on a MacBook computer screen. But personally, I almost prefer the supernatural aspect because once you have that suspension of disbelief, then it kind of explains away anything that might be unrealistic. Whereas this one, you just have to assume that the hacker is all powerful and can just control literally everything, all the cameras, like, all of it. I don't know, maybe I'm in the minority thinking that this concept was just a little bit too complex for this type of movie and didn't really come across as well as like the supernatural aspect in the first one. Also, I want to say that all of the characters in Dark Web felt more unrealistic to me. Not that they wouldn't be friends necessarily, they were just all so different and especially in the beginning, they did not feel like real people at all. Especially how they engaged with each other, I just feel like the dynamic wasn't as believable. So the reason why I say these movies are complete polar opposites of each other is because what one movie had going for it, the other one completely lacks. So as I mentioned, the original Unfriended had really decent gore and I think the horror elements were actually really good, but when I was watching Dark Web, I was like constantly waiting for something to happen. You know, gore, a death scene, anything. There was like no horror elements at all. Even when we got to see like when they opened the Dark Web videos or whatever, we saw nothing there. It was just like a girl walking. So that was an opportunity, I feel like, to show us something disturbing and something, you know, gory, horrific, something. I just feel like they had a lot of missed opportunities when it comes to the horror aspect of Dark Web. Now, this might be controversial to say because some of the themes of the movie, but Dark Web was rated R and I'm not really sure why. <laughs> they probably could have gotten away with the PG-13 rating. I mean, there just wasn't enough horror, I think. It was just conceptual. And that for me isn't good enough when you come from watching Unfriended, like the first one, where there's like disturbing death scenes and gore. Like it's all fictionalized, so why can't we push it a little? Why can't we show a death on camera? Because a lot of the deaths were off camera. And it was so frustrating as a fan of the first one, because it's like if you watched the first Final Destination and then the second one had all the death scenes off camera, like it, 
that doesn't make sense to me. At about 45 minutes into Dark Web, I was like getting bored because I realized that no one had died yet. <laughs> like it was just dragging on. And I feel like they had to do this and had to make it more plot heavy because of the complex nature of the storyline that they chose to go with. You know, the build up scenes when they're all like, what's going on? Who is that? What's what's happening? It just lasted a little bit too long in Dark Web. And I feel like Unfriended was a perfect length at only an hour and 23 minutes. It was very concise, didn't need to be longer, didn't to drag on at all. The death started pretty early on and the disturbing stuff happened immediately. So I feel like Unfriended had really good pacing and writing and it was just concise to the point. You know, Dark Web was 10 minutes longer, but it felt like 30 minutes longer. Another way that they're almost opposite of each other is their endings. I thought the ending of Unfriended, the first one, was so cheesy and bad, like not even cheesy in a good way. It was bad, almost like Paranormal Activity ending bad. Blair ends up being the only survivor and it's just kind of on her screen and then all of a sudden the laptop shuts and then they break that wall. I don't want to say fourth wall. It's not. They break the the way that it's been filmed the whole time and then you have Laura as a ghost come at you at the camera. And it's so, so bad. I think that hands down is the worst part of Unfriended. Doesn't ruin the movie for me but it's really bad. However, the ending to Dark Web actually made the movie a little bit better for me, even though it made it that much more complex. Except there are four endings to Dark Web. They shot four endings and then would randomly play them at certain theaters. So no one really saw the same ending, like everyone saw different ones. The ending that I saw when I watched it on the HBO Go app is the one where Amaya was told to go to this warehouse I'm not even, it's so complex, I'm not even gonna explain it. She was at this warehouse and then she was originally gonna go meet Matthias, is that how you say his name? And then there's a vote taking place on whether or not Matthias lives or dies and there's like over 20,000 votes happening. And as the screen kind of like zooms out, you realize the bigger picture of what's actually happening, that every little thing was planned and every single choice of every character and what happened to them was actually voted upon by people playing this game on the dark web. And it sounds complicated, but I think just that one shot, it executed that that idea pretty well and it added a twist to the end that wasn't expected, at least for me. So that was just one of the endings that exists. I, after reading the other three endings, I think I got the best ending and I hope that they still had that kind of reveal of the bigger dark web game happening for all of them because that honestly made the movie a little bit better for me and like worth the watch through. Would I rewatch it? Absolutely not. So anyways, to recap, unfriended, better horror, bad ending, dark web, no horror, good ending. So ultimately, since we're kind of comparing them now, Unfriended is the better movie in my opinion. I don't think Dark Web was a great sequel. I wish I had watched this before doing my worst sequels video because this is definitely a worst sequel for me. I think it's actually pretty well loved though by fans. Um, so I expect some disagreements in the comments. But I think that Unfriended was easy to follow, more enjoyable to watch. Since it's all filmed on a laptop, I think it needs to really be simple and I think the first film did that well. The second film made it way too complicated without allowing for gore and horror. I like the concept of Dark Web, don't get me wrong. I think that it's cool and a natural progression of the a sequel for this kind of franchise, but I think they really could have like given us some stuff. I mean it's about Dark Web. Like shouldn't we see some stuff that lives up to that? concept? Anyway, let me know which you prefer out of the two or if you don't like any of them or if you like both of them. Tell me your opinions about Unfriended and Unfriended Dark Web down in the comments. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.